Hi there and welcome to another Velonomad.com video. Today we're reviewing the Cyclone Aero Comfort Plus. Now I have to say thanks to Cyclone for sending this to me all the way from Italy. Uh, although they sent it to me, you can be sure I'm going to do a frank and fearless review of this. There's no point in, in sugarcoating anything that I think needs to be improved. So there's a lot of pluses for this bag, but there's also a few things that I think can be improved. So of course I'm going to mention those. Alright, with uh, bike bag reviews, for, for those of you who are familiar with my other bike bag reviews, you'll know what I look for in a bike bag. For those who are new to Velo Nomad or haven't seen a video, this basically I have a few things I look at. Um, agility, how easily you can move a bike bag around the airport, tr um, you know, get into trains and stuff like that. The, the bike bag needs to move around um, really, really easily, not be a drag, because there's nothing worse than having a backpack and maybe another bag and maybe lugging this thing around. You want it to just be a breeze. Um, compactability, really important for those going overseas and who have a high car or a camper van, you want to be able to pack this thing down nice and tight and it's not going to be in the way for the duration of your trip. Uh, weight, really important for travellers these days with airlines crimping, crimping um, on, on baggage allowances, you know, five, six kilos here and there between, you know, a bike bag is, is really quite important, I think it makes a big difference or if you can afford to cut stuff out of your um, packing list, well it makes your whole your whole um, luggage weight a lot lighter which makes it easy to get around. Uh, price, not a huge deal breaker, it's important to a lot of people, I understand that, but you know, is it more important to worry about one or two hundred dollars or, or whatever your local currency is or a four or five thousand dollar buck, so to me, you know, it is important but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we've also got longevity and robustness, how long the bike bag's going to last, there's no point in spending three, four, five hundred dollars on um, of all Australian currency. Obviously uh, on a bike bag only to have it fall apart or break, you know, one trip or two trips in, that's pretty pointless to me and that it kind of ruins the experience of the bag. Um, we've also got um, securing the bike, how well it's, you know, you can secure the bike internally and, and really lock it into the bike bag. Uh, adjustability of the bag, what size bikes it can accommodate. Also we've got um, what else have we got? Price, weight, robustness, and overall, I guess, overall design considerations like how how um, you know, how well the bike bag's put together, which which kinds of kind of goes to robustness, but also little things like the quality of zips, how how easily you can get the bike in and out, um, and be ready to ride. You know, little things like that that kind of um, you don't really think about but once once you know if they're really tuned and dialed in using the bike bag becomes a breeze and, and I guess a joy, so things you might not think of at first. Okay, so like I said, there's there's a few great things about this bag and there's a few things that I think need to be improved. So I'm going to talk about the um, the great things first. Usually it's the other way around, but I'm going to, I'm going to highlight the positives first. Alright, so for travellers these days, for me, the, well at least for me, the most important things I think are weight of the bag, it's agility, getting, getting around and compactability. Now, I've done a few trips now um, cycling trips to Europe from Australia, so about as far as you can go. And um, probably these things are the things that really stood out for me. Yeah, so so weight of the, the bag, how easily it is so that I can get around, uh, checking counter cues and stuff like that. And um, and also compactness, you know, if I'm in a camper van, I don't want this thing to be in the way. I don't want to have to leave it at, at a depot or something like that. I just want it to be, you know, out of the way and not a, not a hassle. So in terms of weight, this bike bag is about seven kilos. It's super, super light. Um, maybe the Polaris bike pod is, is close, but to me this thing is pretty much the winner in this category. Um, there's a couple bike bags I haven't tested yet, but or reviewed yet, but this one it's really light and it's noticeably light. It's it's, it's fantastic in that regard. Um, agility. I've had personal experience with this. I've tra travelled to Europe with one of these bags, and the agility is absolutely amazing. It's it's mind blowing. Um, you know, it's on four casters, I'll show you that a bit later on for, for, um, for a different reason, but, so this thing basically, it turns on a dime, it's really not a hassle to move around, it just moves forward and back and you can just spin it around on the spot, so getting around cues and stuff like that, which, you know, some of you might think that's not a huge hassle, but <laughs> having used other bike bags that aren't as, as agile as this, I can tell you, it's, it's, it's just makes things so much more stress-free when you can just tow your bike bag around and then you've got other bags and it's it's not a drag. Um, and also compactness. Now I've got to get the bag for this. This bike bag comes with this bag, big sleeping bag, bag actually, sort of thing. So it's not a huge bag really. 
Um, so basically, this thing rolls up really, really easily, and it just hops in the hops in the bag, it pops in the bag there, and you can stow it away. And it's really, it doesn't to me, it doesn't really get in in the way. Uh, in a camper van or a minivan or a high car, it would just go in the back and and be out of sight and out of mind, as it were, until you need it again. All right. So now I want to talk about the things that I think need to be improved, uh, and and this is. These are things that kind of um, I've picked up from my own personal use of the bike bag, but also from anecdotal stories from you know a very good friend and some other friends. These, this is the kind of feedback that I've gotten from these guys. Um, so firstly, I'm going to move into the bag, so I'll talk about the things on the outside of the bag first. So firstly, I want to talk about robustness and longevity of the bag. Um, firstly, if we tip the bag up, and it does have a bike in it, um, we've got these four casters, which, which, which you know, influence how easy the bag is to get around. Now, the problem for me is I've had a caster come off. It wasn't my bike bag. Um, I've had other, you know, more than one person tell me they've had the exact same problem. The caster has just disappeared uh, in transit, or that one guy told me he was running for a train and the caster just went AWOL. So, you know, it's a bit of a, it's, it's, there's enough there for me that that this is something that needs to be looked at, and um, possibly a better way of attaching the casters, maybe. Maybe, you know, casters on the front and skateboard wheels on the back or something like that. Um, but that's certainly something with enough anecdotal evidence behind it that it, it could be of a downside. Um, I guess, you know, before and after your trip or midway through it, you can check the bolts on the casters because that seems to be the point what, that causes, the, you know, the problem. Check the bolts and make sure they're all done up tight and maybe put some Loctite on them or something like that to ensure they don't just undo themselves. Uh, the next thing with robustness is also to do with the base, and that's this material now. Inside here is a metal frame, uh, and there's the material that the bag's made of is also the base. Now, to me, uh, that's going to rip uh, you up and down stairs or whatever. Uh, to me, I reckon that should probably be, or if you know, if I had to redesign this, I'd probably use a plastic base or something there, just or, or in, inside it. Um, the material, or even on the outside, is just have some hard plastic. It's not going to add a lot of weight to the bag, really, um, but it'll just help protect the bag a little bit more and stop it ripping. Because, like I said, you don't want to, to buy a bag like this and then, and they're not super cheap. You know, five hundred and fifty Australian dollars or something like that off Wiggle. You don't want to um, come back from one trip and find a great big tear there and have to duct tape it or something else. That's you know, that's that's not ideal, obviously. <laughs> okay, next thing is. Overall design considerations. I mean, the ba the bike bag looks great. Uh, there's no doubt about that. It doesn't tip over like other bike bags. It's it's very very solid, um, laterally, and probably it, it it is prone to tipping forward a little bit. Uh, if you weight it down the back, that's not going to be an issue. For me, for me, the zips are a little bit light. Um, I mean, you're going to be you're not going to be in and out of them a lot, but they are a little light for a bag like this. Other bike bags have got really heavy gauge plastic meaty zips that you know, pretty bomb proof, so for me the zips could probably be replaced with something a bit hardier. Next thing is getting in and out of the bag, which also goes to design considerations. Simply two zips. And basically, we fold it back and we're in, so it's, it's pretty well thought out, thought out in terms of getting in and out. The bike still stands there, and you just unzip, and, and there you are. You're in the bike bag. It's it's very well um, it's very well thought of in, out, thought out in terms of um, access. There's a couple of internal straps that I didn't have done up, which is something I want to talk about now, actually. Okay, so in terms of securing the bike, there's a metal frame. Again, I'll talk about that in a second. But you have these two internal straps. Attached to the wheel, the wheel um, holders, I guess you could call them. So basically, this goes over the top tube, and then stand a plastic clip in there, and you tighten it. Now that, and in combination with another one, is what's supposed to hold this bag in place. Now, when I took this overseas, in when I took one overseas in 2009, uh, I secured it with the straps. Still popped off. Um, I had it, I had it done. At, um, you know, nice and tight, both straps, and I thought really held down onto the onto the base, onto the frame, and the bike still popped off. So to me, that's something that definitely, probably, well, not definitely, probably, it definitely needs looking at. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a design engineer in terms of bike bags, but certainly there needs to be a couple more straps or, or a better way of doing it. Perhaps 
strapped from the frame over the bike or something like that. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is uh, adjustability. So I reveal my look, which is an extra small look, a um, little bit dirty, so it's just been out on the road. And this, the forks sit on this arm. Now this sits in a in a sleeve and it slides forward and back. At the moment, remember this is like a 49 centimeter frame. Um, at the moment, this arm is basically the end of it is just popping out of the sleeve. So, and the sleeve's about that long. What's that? 15 centimeters. So. So there's certainly enough adjustability to slide the sleeve forward and accommodate a larger bike, you know, medium large, extra large, whatever. The problem here is the back, the back flap, if I hook it up from the seat there to hold it up, you can see, well I don't know if you can see, I hope you can, there's only a few, maybe, you know, a few centimetres of play there. So I'm not sure that this bike bag could, can, could accommodate a larger, extra large bike frame. Um, even if you did manage to squeeze it in, there's, there's probably not going to be enough room to put padding in the front, which is what I certainly would look at doing um, to protect the forks and also up, up the top. Up the top, there's a bit of there's a bit of space, you know, to put around the um, to put around the um, brakes and shifters. So, you know, that's that's probably going to be okay. But to me, it's a little bit iffy if, if the bike bag is long enough. Um, certainly in the rear, if I just slide this forward, certainly in the rear, and remember, like I said, this is an extra small bike, that derailleur is right up against the, um, is almost right up against the zip. So, you know, if you had a larger bike, you'd be in danger of, of having this cable um, banging up against the back of the bag. Now, you know, then you could put some bubble wrap in, but it's probably going to get knocked. Um, maybe do der derailleur some damage. Um, which leads me to my next point. This bike bag comes with a derailleur protector. So basically, where the skewer goes through, you attach it in there, and it's supposed to sit down and protect the derailleur from knocks from the side. The problem here is it's got a funny shape to it. So in the skewer cavity, um, I'm not sure that's the right name, but that'll do. This actually doesn't fit in a look. I know it fits in a specialised Roubaix because that's what I went with um, putting this bag last time. Um, so that's to me that's useless. So I don't know how you'd fix that, make that a more um, you know a general shape or something like that, a universal shape to fit in all the all the um, the skewer housings. I know it'd be hard for every bike, but to me that's pretty pointless. Um, the problem is that the skewers aren't long enough. Now I tried it with my with my Dura Ace skewers and still not long enough. So unless you've got extra long skewers, a that doesn't fit in there. And if it did, I could probably get it in. But b the um, the bag probably sh needs to ship with longer skewers to accommodate that problem. All right. One thing I I did mention before about getting the bike in and out quickly, um, but which I want to touch upon a little bit more, is is the pedals. Now most bike, this, this sits in there nice and easily, you can see it's going to be a cinch just to pull the bike off, put your wheels on and away you go. You do have to take your pedals off still, I've got them on there I know, but you you probably, you could probably get away with leaving them on there. Um, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd take them off. It's just one less thing to be, to sort of pressure point to be banged and then push your cranks across, maybe put them out of shape. Not much chance, but it could happen. Um, you know, so once you start having to muck around with pedals, uh, it starts adding time and, and sort of that advantage of this, this bike bag in terms of being able to pop it in and pop it out and quickly start riding is diminished somewhat. So most, most other bike bags you have to take off the handlebars, the pedals and just pop the seat, the seat down or take the whole post out. Um, you know, once you start doing that, you, you lose a lot of, you lose a lot of um, advantage in this bike bag. You know, I could probably get away with leaving this on, just popping that down, but I still have to take the pedals off. So I suppose really it's just a it's just an exercise in putting pedals on. So you know it's this this bike bag does have a bit of an advantage in, in that regard. Alright, let's talk about padding because that's important for bikes. Now this bike bag on the sidewalls has has quite good padding, I think. Um, 
it's probably adequate, but as you can see, the wheels just slot into these sleeves here um, on either side of the bike. So, you know, your wheels, you probably want your wheels to take a little bit more of a knock than the actual bike frame itself, especially if you're traveling with something bomb proof like, you know, Mavic Open Pros or whatever, or Altegra's or, you know, something reliable that, that, that you can afford to lose if something goes wrong. Um, having said that, you'd be really unfortunate for, for a wheel to be, to be knocked hard enough to break it. Um, so yeah, the padding's, the padding's really good. Like I said before, the bottom's just material to me. That needs to certainly be improved. Um, now, around, around the, um, the hoods, they've got this yellow... I'm going to put this yellow padding in, which is really thick. And that just sits on top of the, sits on top of the hoods there, which is good. And it rolls around the front to protect the, the levers. What it doesn't protect them from is the side impact. Uh, when I bought my bike back from, from Europe in 2009, this whole, th this whole housing had been knocked right around. The handlebars had been bent. Um, now, I had Ultegra, so the, I don't know whether the, the shifters had actually been knocked in and because they're Ultegra, the whole, the whole um, assembly moves and that saved it. But with SRAM, which is what, what's on here now, that, that could potentially snap. So, to me, that's a bit of an issue. That's a result of the design of the, the bag and you leave your handlebars on other bike bags, you take these off and you fold them across the frame so everything's really snug and secure. So, you know, whilst the bike bag has really good padding itself on the sides and, you know, you can always put bubble wrap around it, that's still something to be aware of because, you know, baggage handles don't have the best reputation on this sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's, you hear some horror stories, so that's something you have to be aware of. Uh, getting wheels in and out is quite simple like I showed you, they just pop in the side. There's ample room to put other stuff in here and the bike bag certainly light, light enough to accommodate um, you know, some extra stuff in here, whether you nix or whatever. Um, water bottles and food and stuff like that just to pad it out. Um, maybe a couple of towels as well. So yeah, there's a, like I said, there's a few things that need to be, um, to, need to be improved and just you know, to summarise them, there's the casters and the base need to be looked at. Maybe maybe the spacing and the cut of the bag to accommodate um, bigger bikes. You know, obviously these bike bags do fit bigger bikes in because pro teams are using these. So you know there's some big big guys on pro teams who, you know, big lanky tall guys on on large frames. I don't know about extra large but so certainly they fit but it's whether they fit comfortably enough to have the extra padding in, you know, for peace of mind. Um, and also I mentioned the fact that you would need to have extra padding around here to protect it and probably around the seat as well. Um, longer skewers needed for these I think and certainly uh, if I were you I'd be putting a lot of bubble wrap around the rear derail which any bike bag you'd do the exact same so it's not really you know it's not really designed for or anything or anything like that for this bike bag. Uh, and like I said pluses agility around airports is, is a huge huge bonus or, or, or plus for this bag it's awesome. Um, the weight, it's really, really light. Um, it compacts down really well for, for traveling. And also, um, like I mentioned before, getting the bike in and out is really quite a breeze. I mean, if you have to, if you have to put the pedals on, it's a, it's a two-minute two, two minute job of pedals, so really it's not a huge deal. Uh, and also to pop the seat post in, it's not a massive deal either. Uh, so what, probably 10 minutes to put the bike together and other bike bags might be 20, so it's not a massive advantage, but it's just ease of getting in and out. It's quite, it's not unwieldy at all, it's pretty easy, so that's a positive. So overall, I think I've, I think I've pretty much covered everything, uh, as, as well as longevity of the bag. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a few pain points where the bag is prone to ripping, casters falling off and stuff like that, and they're, they're just things that need to be looked at, I think. Um, so Cycon, guys from Cycon, if you're watching, that's not big criticism, it's just design things that I think could be improved and it's not just me saying it, it's other people as well so you know uh, take it or leave it I guess so yeah I hope this I hope this has helped you in your quest for the perfect bike bag which I don't think really exists there's some great products out there and the Cyclone Arrow Comfort Plus is certainly another great bike bag um, in the universe of bike bags so I guess look at the scores in the post so I'll put some overall scores in there uh, and have a think about what's important to you like I said to you before, if you're on a lot, lot of long haul trips, and um, and probably stuff like uh, or metrics like uh, agility around airports and compactability, especially if you have a camper van or a high car, uh, and weight will be really important. But if you're just coming across from the UK to France or Italy or whatever, then um, 
you might have a totally different set of characteristics in a bike bag that are important to you. So I'll list them all out. There'll be scores um, and, and the weighting for each for each characteristic and, and I'll probably put a, a download a spreadsheet for downloading there as well so you can tweak the numbers yourself and see how it comes out. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you got a bit out of it and I'll see you in another video soon.